is Mole Mama, and I'm here today with Sarah and Ricardo and my wonderful cousin Eva, and we're in the Algarve in Portugal, and Seda and Ricardo are going to be teaching us how to make traditional Portuguese recipes today. We're from Algarve Chefs. We have 13 years experience. We've had already two restaurants before, but now we're mainly catering with Diana and Eva. We are cooking one soup, uh, which is the, probably the most traditional Portuguese soup, which is caldo verde. So today I brought a traditional bowl where we serve the caldo verde. It's pottery, I think it's very cute. It has caldo verde written all over it, and it has a little flour. It's our um, hangover soup in the first place. <laughs> Apart from that, we eat it all winter long. Very important, we eat it after midnight uh, on uh, New Year's Eve. Oh, it's the most traditional Portuguese soup there is. So today we're gonna learn how to make it. So let's just chop some, a few garlics okay. and, just, and we have it peeled for you, which is also very nice. Very nice. Just, just four, four total. So. Okay. See, I need my mocha head day. <laughs> do this? Yes, because I smashed up all my garlic and mocha head days. <laughs> okay. Let's right. start with the onions. Okay. And push. One each, right? Yeah. Okay. One Good. each. Okay. Um, let me. So, my Portuguese grandma died when I was only six years old. So, the only Portuguese recipes I know of are the ones she taught my mother before she died. So, not very many. So, let's go with some olive oil. Is that good? Uh, maybe a bit more. Ooh. Really going crazy with all Yes. Though. And is this, oh, it's made in Portugal. Yes, of course. We only use, of course, we <laughs> only use Portuguese olive oil. No, we have a lot of production in Portugal. Oh, yeah. We only use Portuguese olive oil. All people in the country only Very use nice. Portuguese olive oil. Yeah. And we also always use virgin extra. Let's go to the chorizo. Uh, slice the guy. Uh, when it's good chorizo, it's always so, natural casing. Okay. So you want it in circle, just slice thick, thin, uh, like that? Not, uh, not very thin, yes. Thicker, like that maybe? Yes. Okay, okay. like that. Okay. I'm going to smell it. it. Smells delicious. Oh, it's, it's black pork, the fruit from the oak tree. Oh, that's the only thing they feed it. Yes, exactly. Oh, wow, it smells and it's, amazing. It's really black, the board. It's huge and black. I wish you can all smell this. Yes, and to me, it smells like what I would call linguisa at home. This is what Lara linguisa, but it smells Don't better. Don't worry. Okay, I know, we have linguisa coming, but this is not what we call chorizo, so it's very interesting. This is the chopped onion with the garlic, so we're going to going to put it in olive oil and that's we call in what we call in Portugal a refugado. So refugado uh, is uh, one of the bases of Portuguese cuisine. It's present in lots of dishes, lots of stews. So you cook it until the onion and garlic are quite translucent or sometimes a bit uh, slight, slightly golden. You'll sometimes add tomatoes or white wine or that. So refugado is quite important and it's like the equivalent of Italian sofrito. Uh, mamas will tell you, oh uh, honey, just make a refugado quickly and we do it quickly and then it's the basis for almost everything. And my mother did this too. My mother did onions and garlic in almost everything. In exactly. Tomatoes. So the same thing. So and We really didn't have a name for it, but it was just, that's how we started. Yes, but it's refugado. Okay, now I know what okay. for it. Okay. <laughs> We are just going to use one chorizo for the caldo verde. I make things a bit differently than um, most of the people for caldo verde okay. because I like it best this way and I think it, uh, we get a bit more flavor. I put and I will process a bit of chorizo with, uh, okay. with everything okay. because I think we get more flavor. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Let's be naughty. <laughs> Let's be naughty. <laughs> this is called galega. Okay. So we use it in Portugal, Spain, okay. Brazil. When we were in Budapest, we were desperate because we had a menu for some important people and they wanted traditional Portuguese food and then we said we need to cook Calvert. And with every market possible and imaginable. And we didn't find the Cove Galega, of course. They didn't have it. And we said, oh my God. Are we going to make a gold fair? We ended up with using Swiss chard instead. Okay, so we, we just need a firm, a firm okay. um, 
cabbage uh, to use yeah. because here in the supermarkets you'll find it like this already okay. Julia and in okay. the markets in the farmers markets you'll see the old ladies they have a machine a very nice machine ah. that makes this that okay. makes it all ready to go you can use I think kale or Swiss chard okay wrap them uh, the leaves all together and julienne it yourself okay. and you'd get a it's okay. not the same, but it's as close as we can get. Okay. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Okay. okay. Verde literally means green stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. So Sarah just put in more chorizo yes. inside. So she took big chunks of it in addition to all the chorizo that we cooked in the beginning. Yes. And then she Here pureed it. Is. it. Yes. This kitchen smells amazing. I wish I could record the smell. <laughs> that's what I, yes, like, okay, that's, iPhone, that's <laughs> Apple, get on that. Record, record smell for us, because it's amazing in here. So this is the green stuff, and so yes, at green home, cabbage. I, if I can't get the green cabbage, I can use kale or chard. Exactly. You okay. Julianne. Yes. Okay. And we'll put this and the chorizo now. Oh, that's beautiful. It is. So See the cute. magic. I, yes, lots of magic. See the magic happening? Go okay. On. And like I said, I want the smell recorded. <laughs> More? Yes. Okay. And some people like to eat sometimes the green stuff with a fork. Wow. A bit more. And I've spilt it all over the place, but that's normal oh, <laughs> for me. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe it's good. Is it good? So. Do you want to do a little bit what it looks like? Yeah, so here it is. And as she was mentioning, we can only get this in Portugal. Um, but we can at home make use chard or kale. So when I make it at home, I'll probably be using kale because I love kale. Just a tiny bit more. Okay. Okay. And we're good. Okay. okay, ready. And now just five minutes and it's ready. Okay. Okay, so we have our caldo verde verde. Yes. yes. Okay, caldo verde, and it's got potatoes and onion and garlic. Yes. And olive oil and, and the cabbage, of, of course. course. And lots of chorizo. And chorizo. <laughs> so some of my favorites. But I wanted to thank you for doing this for coming well, here in Portugal. And I'm going to taste it so that everybody watching, and so I'm going to try and take a bite. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's truly so amazing. I'll be making this at home. So, we have the recipe for you. Thank you very much for watching Mole Mama, where we add love to every recipe that we make. Live to you from the Algarve in Portugal with Sena and Ricardo. Que Dios te bendiga. Thanks for watching.